Hello my dear health seekers, Inga from Health Origins here and welcome to Meal Prep for Weight Loss Show week 22. So today we have an exciting recipe um, which is vegan quiche so I'll be experimenting making my vegan first vegan quiche and also a simple pasta recipe. So let's begin. So we'll be starting with the um, quiche recipe. So for quiche, um, we're gonna do um, a crust first. So I'm using the recipe that I use for my um, uh, lemon curd tarts. Um, so I'll link to the recipe below, but basically I am just omitting um, maple syrup from it. So it's um, three quarters of a cup of a pastry wholemeal flour so so that's pastry wholemeal so it's a bit lighter than just normal wholemeal but it's you know wholemeal so it's still um, whole food so it's three quarters of a cup goes in here then I've got a quarter of a cup of cashews but I think almonds would work here as well so cashews go in and now you could either use plain water, then you, you would put a pinch, pinch of salt here. However, I'm going to be using my olive brine here, which already has saltiness and sourness. So I'm not going to um, put any additional salt here. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to blend um, the cashews and the flour together until it's um, fine crumb. So I'm using my food processor, my Sage food processor. I love it. I'll link to, to the food processor where you can buy your own. Um, but you could use different food processors. Um, this is, you know, quite an expensive one, but if you wanted like a cheaper one, there are some Ninja ones I've heard good reviews on. Um, I'll link to, to that below as well. But um, let, yeah, so let's just blend it until it's fine crumb. So let's check it out. Um, I can still see some pieces of nut, but it should be okay. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be putting this um, back on and I've got this little um, hole that I can leave um, open. I'm going to switch it off for a second. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, start putting a tablespoon at a time and see when this uh, will start sticking together um, and and I'm not using any butter or oil in this so the nuts in this will be you know having some of you know their fattiness so natural fattiness and I'm just using cold water or um, olive brine in this instance um, just to kind of stick it all together bind it together so I'm gonna just start going with that again and then put in a tablespoon at a time and see how many tablespoons we'll need probably about three four maybe five we'll see So after three, um, it's it's kind of, I can see it's a little bit moist. The crumb is a bit more moist, but it's still not sticking together. So I'm going to add um, probably another couple of tablespoons. Um, 
and you don't want to overdo it obviously with water you don't want it to become like mush um, so I'm just gonna feel because there's a little bit moisture on the edges here and my crumbs are just kind of starting to stick together if you press them so they are getting there so I think I might need another tablespoon and uh, we'll see how that's going and there's actually a little bit of um, flour there just at the bottom so I'm gonna try and mix a little bit of that up um, I'll mix that up as much as I can because there's some wetter bits of this and there's some drier bits so I'm just gonna mix that all together give another quick blend So it's still a separate crumb. So what you want to see, it's starting to kind of move more like a little bit more of a single dough, if you like, kind of sticking together a little bit more. So um, I'm just going to add another tablespoon up here. Um, and we'll see how we get on. So as you can see, it's kind of clumped together now into like bits of um, dough almost. So that is great. So we're gonna just switch the power off um, and scrape that out and put it into our, oh, stuck, um, and put it into our baking tin. So whatever um, glass, container um, you are using or even ceramic um, is fine. I've got this glass one here. I really need to buy a glass or a ceramic, probably glass um, quiche, uh, like a round um, with like a wrinkled edges specifically for quiche or pies. Um, I haven't got one of those at the minute. So so yeah, so this is um, kind of a dough is forming really. Um, I wonder if I've got enough actually for this for this dish. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna um, roll it out slightly so that we could, you know, make it thinner and spread it out. So I brought in a little bit more flour here. So I'm gonna sprinkle just a little bit on my work surface here and a little bit on my rolling pin. Um, and I'm gonna just make a, a nice dough ball um, and try and roll it out quite thinly so we could, you know, put it in, in our um, glass container there. So give it a roll. And it's quite stiff actually. Um, so you want maybe you want um, you want to rest it for maybe um, five minutes or something so the gluten relax a little bit if it's kind of uh, harder to roll for you. Um, it'll relax a little bit. Make sure you cover it with maybe, um, you know, with something so it doesn't dry out for you though. But um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll manage to roll it out. So I'm going to try and roll it into some kind of square of sorts just so that it fits our um, pan a bit better. So this is obviously oil-free um, crust, uh, most other crusts, um, you know, that you see, conventional recipes, they always have lots of butter or if vegan, they have lots of marge or vegan butter in there. Um, but this is obviously oil free, um, but the, it has nuts for this natural bit of fat um, in the crust. So I'm trying to um, 
roll it wider and a little bit thinner so that it kind of fits and covers the edges of my um, of my tin and you could be a little bit more uh, neat and you could cut cut offs of this to make it kind of neater but I'll, I'll try and make it fit and do it in the tin reshape it in the tin a little bit so if you want the crust a little bit thicker maybe double the recipe because this is quite a thin crust so um, I'm gonna just add it into my container and try to make it so that it covers a little bit up the edges here as you can see um, and some bits obviously have more some bits have less so what I'll do I'll just take it off where it's got too much and put it where it's got little to try and glue it on um, like this um, I'll actually get a knife and try and neaten this up because we kind of want more uniform edges so if we maybe go as high as that and then just cut off this uneven edge here maybe so it's a bit like playing with the play-doh and some art project if you like to making this looking neat and closing any gaps um, that you see and trying to make this square so this is now looking even and I'm gonna be putting this in my preheated oven on 170 degrees Celsius which is a fan oven so it's about um, 180 then uh, for about 10 minutes to pre-cook so we want to kind of partially bake it so as the base is baking I'm gonna be starting with my filling so what we're gonna do now first we're gonna prepare the green ingredients so I've got um, about you know just over half a leek and I'm using mostly the white part um, so I'm gonna uh, put it in a preheated pan and we're gonna fry it dry fry it for a few minutes and while it does that I'm gonna be showing you how I prepared spring greens so these are um, three leaves three big leaves of these spring greens and how I prepare them I take out the middle um, the middle um, kind of hardy um, stem so I've just um, kind of slice it by the side of the stem to make sure to take all the um, the greenery and then kind of cut off somewhere um, there like that and just cut at the side and there you go and then I use this I put it normally in freezer bags um, chop it up and put you know it in freezer uh, freezer bags um, together with some um, carrot ends and you know other bits and pieces um, to make stock and this I normally fold it um, like that into a, like a little roll if you like and then I just thinly uh, slice it like that make sure watch out for your fingers always use the knuckles um, you know against the knife like this so that you don't cut it in always keep it like that so that you can't cut yourself um, so yeah so this is about four cups um, of spring greens so it's kind of like a, a leaf cabbage family I'm guessing um, so yeah so about four cups um, and we're gonna be adding that to our um, leeks so I'm just dry frying the leeks because I wash them they're fairly wet anyway um, but if they start um, kind of sticking then I've got a little bit of water 
that I'm going to be adding a couple of tablespoons at a time to deglaze the pan if it starts really sticking. But so far I've got a non-stick pan so far. This is a non-stick wok actually. Um, so far it seems to be working okay. And I've broken up the, um, the big rings into kind of just smaller pieces. That way they cook through a little bit quicker and we don't want to find massive bit of leak in our um, quiche anyway. So I'll let this cook for um, a couple more minutes. So it's been about three minutes. The um, leeks have softened. They started coloring just a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to reduce it on um, quite low. I'm going to add the garlic. So I've got three cloves of garlic. So for this recipe, it's optional whether you want to use fresh garlic like me here, or you're going to want to put some garlic powder in, uh, in the tofu mixture later on. Um, you can do either of those. So I'm going to just add the garlic. Um, and mix in and I'm gonna fry it for one minute like that just so that until it becomes aromatic and you have to be very careful not to have it on very high um, especially obviously it's a wok so it, it gets you know hotter quicker um, you don't want to burn your garlic it's only one minute um, for garlic normally to just fry it a little bit So it's been about a minute. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of water just to the bottom there so that it deglazes the pan and you know just you know I'm not risking to burn this garlic. So I'm just going to put all my greens on the top here. It's still on a fairly low uh, heat so I'm going to put all my spring greens here on the top. And I'm gonna put a lid on and that way um, everything will kind of sweat and steam in its own uh, moisture so I'm gonna give that maybe three four minutes and we're gonna check again and while the greens are steaming here I'm gonna be preparing my tofu mixture so I've got one packet um, which is three well actually 290 grams of drained uh, silken tofu so I'm gonna add that in here so silken tofu um, then I'm gonna add three tablespoons of nutritional yeast here um, then we need um, one tablespoon of um, chickpea or gram flour chickpea or gram is the same thing or you can also use soy flour um, or apparently you could also substitute for cornstarch um, as well so so one tablespoon here um, then I'm gonna need one teaspoon of salt so a teaspoon of salt here and quarter of a teaspoon of turmeric and um, that's optional just for color if you don't want yours yellow then don't add turmeric and then half a teaspoon I've got white pepper but you could add um, just normal black pepper as well so half a teaspoon it's quite peppery um, and I'm gonna do a little blend with my stick blender and then the last ingredient here I've got some shredded um, feta cheese so this is vegan store-bought feta cheese it's like a coconut based cheese but this is optional you don't have to have this but I happen to have some so I'll put it in but you know that is just enough too so that's it it's all blended it didn't take long at all probably about a minute or less um, yeah and I like doing this with a stick blender you could do it in a normal blender but I find that 
um, the force of the blender just you know puts it against the walls and you keep, have to keep on scraping it um, so I prefer put for pastes and thicker uh, liquids that are not like smoothie consistency not runny consistency but like more of a paste I prefer doing them in a stick blender or if you have a smaller blender like um, Nutribullet or Ninja Little um, um, kind of um, blender similar blender then you know that that would work in the smaller container too and actually since I'm following a recipe um, online for this um, I didn't think but really uh, because it you know your quiche is very heavy egg based dish um, Kalana, max salt, sulfuric salt that makes everything taste eggy would work much actually better I think rather than normal salt so instead of a teaspoon of normal salt you could perhaps have a teaspoon of Kalana, max salt or it might be a little bit too much um, then maybe do half 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 teaspoon of normal salt and half a teaspoon of kalanamak so I'm just gonna put a quarter of a teaspoon of kalanamak for just that little bit of flavor hopefully I'm not gonna have it too salty um, here because I didn't put much salt in my base and obviously there's quite a bit of amount of greens as well so hopefully it's not going to be too much but yeah so that's that's another trick that um, if you have Kalanamak salt then use that for that mmm it smells really nice and eggy sulfuric tasting or smelling even um, so yeah so I'm just gonna um, put in the shredded um, kind of feta vegan cheese just mix that in and now that is ready to be adding our greens so let's um, have a look so the greens have um, definitely steamed through um, they're starting to brown a little bit and stick to the bottom but we don't want at this point we don't really want to add any more liquid I'm gonna just um, mix it um, in we want to kind of have this greens as dry as possible because we don't want it to release too much water in our um, in our quiche um, you could use instead of spring greens the original recipe was for spinach but spinach um, you know you you normally cook the leeks first for about three minutes then you add spinach for about two minutes to wilt um, and to release the juices and normally there's much more water coming out of spinach so what you need to do is you need to take it off the heat after finishing after about five six minutes um, then you need to cool it down and like squeeze the extra moisture out of the spinach so that's kind of the recipe or put it in like in a clean um, dishcloth like a, either you could pat it you know you could squeeze it or pat it with the um, kitchen towel you know clean kitchen towel as well um, you could squeeze it with but um, yeah so that that is good so what I'm going to do I'm going to switch that off um, and I'm going to add this mixture to my um, tofu mixture but because it's spring greens it didn't release too much moisture actually so it's looking fairly dry it's good because like I say I don't, we don't want um, excessive moisture in this recipe so I'm just gonna give it a mix so I brought in the crust that I've already baked for 10 minutes on about um, 170 to 180 um, and I kept my oven now he heating up on 180 because um, that's what we're gonna bake it at for about 30-40 minutes but let's fill fill this quiche here it'll be a little bit tricky because the greens are very stringy so I'm gonna try 
my best to fill it up. Mmm, it does smell very eggy. So yeah, about half a teaspoon of Kalanamak is probably enough and half a teaspoon of just normal um, salt should do it. So just trying, looking super eggy here. So just filling in the whole crust. So yeah, so I think that one tablespoon of um, gram or chickpea flour is what really kind of helps set the whole thing um, up. So that's looking so nice and creamy. Don't want to waste anything. Um, so now that will go into the 180 degrees Celsius oven for about um, 30 to 40 minutes. We'll see how long it takes and I'll catch up with you then. Here we go. The quiche is complete. So I baked it for 30 minutes and I've just sliced myself um, a little piece and I'm going to give it a taste test. It's it's looking quite um, soft inside still. It's it's not too stiff. So perhaps you could maybe put a couple of tablespoons of, um, of gram flour, but I'm, I'm hoping it's going to taste fantastic because it smells really delicious. So I'm just going to get one little piece. Oh my goodness. Mmm. This is so good. Because it was kind of drying out at the top, I've only baked it for 30 minutes. I think it could do with, you know, with another maybe five, 10 minutes, if I'm honest. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of cooked and heated through, but I think it might have hardened up a little bit if I cooked for another, if I baked for another 10 minutes. So I think next time I'll do 40 minutes, but oh, the taste is fantastic. Um, the crust has held up okay. Um, wow, it tastes really creamy and um, delicious. I'm sure my mom will be happy with this because it's lunchtime for us, so I better give her a piece. But let's move on to the next dish. So let's get on with the second dish, which is a creamy pasta dish. So I would recommend you cook your pasta fresh before you eat it because it only takes 10 minutes. Um, so you just prepare the sauce ahead of time. Um, but I'm cooking my pasta so that I can taste test it. And now we'll get on with making the sauce. So I've preheated uh, my pan a little bit here and I'm adding 200 grams of um, cut up um, chestnut mushrooms um, any kind of mushrooms would work you know the 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 kind of more meaty tasting shiitake mushrooms would work portobello mushrooms would work um, and even white cup mushrooms would work so the the the, the uh, kind of more meaty the uh, mushroom the more tasty I think the dishes but any kind of mushroom should work so about 200 grams I've sliced it up and what we want to do we want to just um, sweat the mushrooms in their own juices so we don't need to add any oil any uh, even any water or any stock they should be just cooking in, in their own moisture so so let that um, sweat a little bit and then I'm going to tell you um, about the other ingredients. So I made cashew milk, which will give the creaminess to this sauce. So it's very simple. I've just soaked um, half a cup of cashews in boiling water. So I poured boiling water on half a cup of cashews for about 10, 15 minutes. I drained it and then I've added one and a half cups of fresh um, cold water and blended for a couple of minutes in my blender. So so that's the cashew milk. Um, we're also going to need onion powder, um, smoked paprika, 
soy sauce, um, then your um, balsamic vinegar and also slurry so um, to thicken the sauce at the end. So this slurry is made with potato starch so this is one tablespoon of potato starch and two tablespoons of water um, and just mix it up. So, so that's the slurry. So let's just keep cooking the mushrooms for a few minutes um, until they release their liquid and then kind of evaporate and reabsorb it again. So we'll probably cook the mushrooms for about five to seven minutes. So now, as you can see, the liquid has completely evaporated um, and they're starting to stick to the bottom. So we're going to add our cashew milk in here. And then we're going to add other um, spices. So we want uh, one teaspoon of um, onion powder. My onion powder is a little bit clumped, so I'll use this uh, little sieve to just make sure it's not clumped up. Yeah, it's getting a bit steamed up as well while I'm doing it over the pot. So that should be okay now. I've broken it up a little bit. Um, there's a little piece that escaped. So yeah, for some reason this onion powder seems to be clumping up for me in the container. So whether it's obviously not fully sealed from air um, or whether, well, I, you know, when I use it, I have it over pot a little bit, uh, but it just seems to have doing that. Um, and then we want half a teaspoon of smoked paprika here. I love smoked paprika. Onion powder and smoked paprika are my go-to um, spices, I must say. So just mix that up a little bit. Then we want one tablespoon of um, soy sauce to give that saltiness because we're not adding any salt. So that will obviously give that saltiness here. So about a tablespoon and one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar as well. There we go. Ah, it smells delicious already. So that is it. Now we need to get it up to bubbling, boiling again. Um, and we're gonna add the slurry towards the end. If you like your sauces without mushrooms, without bits, you like it smooth, then you can blend this up with a stick blender afterwards or pour it in the blender and blend it up and then you'll have a smooth sauce. But I quite like um, actually pieces of mushroom on my pasta. Um, and this, um, this sauce is great as a gravy on your mashed potatoes or on your steamed potatoes or, or even on steamed vegetables too. So I'm making some mashed potatoes right now as well. Um, so if you double the recipe, then you can have some to put on your pasta and some you could put you know, as a gravy on your mashed potatoes. It's so delicious. So now the sauce is bubbling up nicely, as you can see, and, and it's actually thick enough for my liking. So I'm not gonna add the starch slurry. And um, if yours didn't end up that thick, then you might want to add, um, add the slurry. So I'm gonna just switch it off um, and we're gonna taste test it with a bit of pasta. So this is such a quick and easy, but such a yummy, um, creamy mushroom sauce that like I say, you could use it either on pasta or on potatoes, mashed potatoes, mm, yum. So I've got a little bit of uh, my pasta, as you can see, it's quite red. It's red lentil and beetroot pasta, so quite unusual pasta. But I'll put some sauce here and give it a taste test. Now 
Make sure to take a mushroom. Oh, too much of the pasta. Want a good amount of sauce with it. Mmm. Hot. Mmm. Wow. This is so delicious. I'll probably um put a little bit more salt just on my plate, just a tiny bit, and maybe pepper if you like pepper. That will go really nice. Mmm. But oh it's so creamy. Delicious. So yeah. So this is the two dishes um, done. Let's put it all together. So this is week 22 all together here. Um, so let's have a look what I've got. So I haven't got much of the quiche left. So that's whatever remains because it, it was quite a hit with the family. Um, then I've got the mash, potato mash I've made as well. Um, and I'll link to the recipe of how I make potato mash um, for you. Um, here is the sauce, so the mushroom, creamy mushroom sauce. I actually had to do another batch, so I quickly whipped up a second batch because the first batch we actually finished up with, um, with pasta, we had a meal. Um, this is my soy milk and I can link how I make my soy milk with soya bella and also you can make it without so a soy maker machine too. So I'll link to the two recipes below where you can make your own soy milk. Um, here I made um, citrus kind of infused marinated tofu so um, the recipe I got actually from Sadia from Pickup Limes and I'll link to that uh, recipe of her nourish bowls so that was one of the uh, marinades that she used on tempeh but you can do it on tofu so we had it on tempeh and the remainder I've just marinated some tofu in it um, so that'll be great to bake you know just before we are ready to eat um, about 10-15 minutes bake it on 200 degrees and it's ready to go um, and this is some burgers so okara uh, beetroot burgers that I've um, made a while ago and I had them in the freezer so I just took them out defrosted I will have them in the fridge until we're ready to bake them and that will take about 25 to 30 minutes in the oven on about 200 degrees and they'll be ready to go so a lot of these things um, like you know the sauce I will be making pasta and having that sauce with it um, I'll be having that sauce with mash um, we'll quickly bake the tofu so some of the stuff um, I pre kind of prep but it's not fully complete and it needs just a little like an extra step that night that we're gonna eat it um, and then I also made actually coconut rice so that's in the same recipe um, of Sadia's pickup limes that I mentioned where she makes coconut rice so basically just rice infused with some coconut milk from the can uh, a bit of uh, vegetable um, stock and some cardamom pods um, and it's you know really nice it's got like that slight coconutty and cardamom flavor um, I'll link to that recipe too but um, yeah so this is is the lot let me know which one which recipe sounds most interesting for you which one you're gonna give a go and um, and let me know what other recipes you'd like to see on this channel and uh, if you're new here welcome and subscribe for more videos just like this if you like this video give me a thumbs up um, and remember food is fuel so be mindful of what you put in the body until next time